parents are of different kinds. Some parents are very friendly and lenient while others can be strict disciplinarians. But one thing is for sure that all the parents love their children unconditionally. Hello everyone. In this video we will read class 9 chapter The Little Girl which shows relationship of a father and a daughter. We will read this chapter under various headings. So let's get started. The story is about a little girl Kezia who is very scared of her father and who thinks that her father doesn't love her. Is it true? Will Kezia's perception about her father change? Let's find out in the story. Before you read, do you feel you know your parents better now than when you were much younger? Perhaps you now understand the reasons for some of their actions that used to upset you earlier. This story about a little girl whose feeling for her father changed from fear to understanding will probably find an echo in every home. Little kids are very innocent. They believe in what they see and hear. That's why if their parents are very strict, they are scared of them. But as they grow, they understand the reason behind the action of their parents, which used to upset them earlier. In the story, there is a little girl, Kezia, who is scared of her father. But gradually, she starts understanding her father. What makes her feeling change towards her father? We will read in this lovely story, The Little Girl. Kezia was scared of her father. To the little girl, he was a figure to be feared and avoided. A figure to be feared means a person to be scared of. Kezia was scared of her father and she used to avoid him. Every morning before going to work, her father would come to her room, give her a casual kiss, to which she would respond by saying goodbye father. And it was a great sense of relief for her when she heard the noise of her father's carriage growing fainter and fainter. That means dimmer and dimmer down the long road. So every morning Kezia's father would come to her room, give her a casual kiss. And Kezia would be very happy if she heard the voice of the carriage becoming dimmer and dimmer. Which shows that her father had gone away because she was very scared of her father. In the evening when her father would come, Kezia would stand near the staircase and hear his loud voice. Father would be asking for things like tea, paper, slippers, etc. Kezia, mother would call to her. If you are a good girl, you come down and take off father's boots. So mother would call Kezia and ask her that be a good girl, take your father's boot. And slowly Kezia would slip down the staircase. Slip down means to come quietly and unwillingly and more slowly she would go into the hall push the door of the drawing room and by the time he had his spectacles on and looked at her over them in a way that was terrifying to the little girl so after wearing spectacles dad will look at Kezia in such a way that Kezia would be terrified well Kezia hurry up and pull up these, bo these boots and take them outside have you been a good girl today i don't know father. So Kezia, uh, father would ask that hurry up. Don't be so slow. Have you been a good girl? And to which Kezia would reply. I don't know father. And then father would say don't know. If you stutter like that. Mother will have to take you to the doctor. Stutter means in a talking in a hesitant and irregular way. So she would stutter in replying in front of her father. She never stuttered with other people. So Kezia would stutter only in front of her father not in front of other people, had quite given up. That means she had stopped doing so. She used to stutter. Now she had stopped doing so, but she would still stutter in front of her father. But only with father because then she was trying so hard to say the words properly. So why would she stutter in front of father? Because she was trying so hard to utter every word properly. In that way, in doing so, she would stutter in front of father. What's the matter? What are you looking so wretched about? Wretched means unhappy. Mother, I wish you taught this child not to appear on the brink of suicide. On the brink of suicide means about to commit suicide. Here, Kezia, carry my teacup back to the table carefully. Looking at Kezia, so terrified and stuttering, father asked, why are you so unhappy? Then he turned to mother and he said that I wish you had taught this child something. She looks like she is about to commit suicide. Then he told Kezia to take the teacup back to the table carefully. 
father was very big in appearance he had big hands and neck and especially his mouth when he yawned looking at him and thinking about him alone kezia would feel that he is like a giant kezia couldn't interact with her parents on sunday afternoons grandmother sent her down to the drawing room to have a nice talk with father and mother so on sunday afternoons grandmother would send kezia down to have a conversation a casual casual conversation with her parents but the little girl always found her mother reading and father stretching on the sofa with his face covered with his handkerchief his feet on one of the best cushions sleeping soundly and snoring that means kezia's parents kezia was not able to interact with her parents because she always found her parents busy in doing one thing or the other she sat on the stool gravely watched him until he woke up and stretched and asked the time then looked at her don't stare so kezia you look like a brown owl owl so she sat at the stool waiting for father to get up and when he got up he looked he asked for time and he looked at kezia and he said that don't look at me like a brown owl grandma's suggestion for father's birthday one day when kezia was kept indoors because she had cold her grandmother told her that her father's birthday was next week and she suggested that kezia should make him a pin cushion for a gift out of a beautiful piece of yellow silk so grandma suggested that kezia should make a pin cushion for her father's birthday kezia makes a birthday gift for father laboriously which means with a lot of effort or difficulty with a double cotton the little girl stitched three sides of the cushion but something was to be filled inside so that was the question what should she fill the grandmother was out in the garden and kezia wandered into mother's bedroom wandered means went into by chance by chance she went into mother's bedroom to look for scrap scrap means small pieces of cloth or paper that was not needed so to fill something into the cushion she had she needed something so she by chance went into mother's room to look for scraps on the bed table she discovered a great many sheets of fine paper gathered them tore them into tiny pieces and stuffed her case then sewed up the fourth side so she saw some papers on the bed side she picked them she tore them into small pieces she, she filled them into the cushion and then finally she stitched the four side also this way kezia made a gift for her father father's port authority speech was lost that night there was a hue and cry in the house hue and cry means angry protest that night the day when kezia made pin cushion for her father that night there was hue and cry in the house people were shouting why father's great speech for the port authority had been lost the speech that father had prepared to be delivered at port authority the place where he worked was lost rooms were searched servants were questioned and finally mother came to kezia's room and asked her she asked i suppose you didn't see some papers on a table in our room oh yes said kezia i tore them up for my surprise what screamed mother come straight down to the dining room this instant so mother asked have you seen any paper and kezia said yes i tore them and put them in my cushion mother was mother screamed she was very angry and she said come straight down this instant and she was dragged down to where father was pacing to and fro father was going to and fro he was very worried about his speech his hands were behind his back when she when he saw kezia he asked well that means what's the matter and mother explained father stopped stared at the child and then he asked did you do that and kezia was really very terrified she tried to say no then father ordered mother mother go up to her room and fetch down the damn thing see that the child's put to bed this instant so he said that send the child to bed and bring down the thing that means bring down the torn papers kezia got punishment now kezia was terrified she cried too much to explain she tried to explain but nothing happened she lay down on her bed looking at the evening shadow that was that the evening moon was making through the window the pattern on the floor she cried and she tried to sleep then father came into her room with a ruler in his hand 
and he said that i am going to beat you for this that means i am going to punish you for what you have done kezia screamed she said no no father she tried to hide under the bed cloth but father pulled that cloth aside and he said sit up and hold your hands straight and he said that you must be taught once and for all not to touch what does not belong to you so he said that you must be disciplined that's why you must be punished so that you understand that you should not touch what doesn't belong to you kezia tried to explain that father it was for your birthday but father didn't hear and came down the rule on her little pink palms he bit her with the ruler as later grandma came to comfort the child she wrapped her in a shawl and rocked her in the rocking chair kezia hugged her grandmother she clung that means held her grandmother's soft body and then she asked why did god make fathers grandmother comforted her she gave her a hanky she told her to blow her nose and she tried to put her to sleep she said you will forget all about this in the morning kezia said that i tried to explain to father but he was too upset to listen to me grandmother comforted her and put her to sleep kezia never forgot about this incident next time whenever she saw her father she was so scared that she put both of her hands behind her back and her cheeks turned red in fear the mcdonald's family the mcdonald's lived next door they had five children and kezia would look through a gap in her fence the little girl would see them playing tag in the evening tag is a game in which children catch each other the father with baby mao on his shoulder two little girls hanging to his coat's pocket round and round the flower the running round and round the flower bed shaking with laughter once she also saw the boys turn hoos on them and he tried to catch them laughing all the time turn hoos means uh, putting water through pipe and father tried to catch them laughing all the time then she decided looking at Mac- mr mcdonald playing with a- his children kezia decided that there are different sorts of father it's not just her father who is strict fathers can be loving as well kezia was left alone at home suddenly one day kezia's mother became ill and she and grandmother went to hospital the little girl was left alone in the house with ellis the cook it was all right in the daytime but while ellis was putting her to bed at night suddenly kezia got scared she asked what will i do if i have a nightmare nightmare means a bad dream i often have nightmares and then granny takes me into her bed i can't stay in the dark it all gets whispery so kezia asked ellis that if it gets dark i'm alone what will i do because i never stay alone i get na- nightmares and when this happens grandma take me to her bed and then i don't get scared i feel whisper it's all whispery at nights so that means i hear strange sounds at night on which case uh, on which alice said you just go to sleep child pulling her socks off she tried to put her to bed bed and she said don't scream don't shout otherwise you will wake up your poor father the nightmare but the same old nightmare came so kezia went to bed she slept she was all all alone and then the nightmare came the same old nightmare which she often sees what is the nightmare a butcher with a knife and a rope who came nearer and nearer smiling that dreadful smile a scary smile so she sees a butcher with knife and ro- uh, rope in in her dreams the butcher would come nearer and nearer with a scary smile while she was not able to move she was still she was crying out this is the nightmare she used to see when she saw the nightmare she shouted grandma grandma and she woke up shivering shivering means trembling she was so scared that she was she all of a sudden got up and she was shivering to see father beside her bed a candle in his hand what's the matter he said so all of a sudden when kezia woke up scared it was father who was standing beside her bed next to her bed with a candle in his hand and he said what's the matter kezia tried to explain her dream to her father a butcher a knife then she said i want granny father blew out the candle he bent down and picked the child in his arms he carried the child through the passage into his big bedroom there was a newspaper on his bed he put the paper away and then carefully tucked up the child tucked up means covered up nicely in the bed he put the child nicely in the bed and he himself lay beside her he himself lay next to her 
half asleep still still with the butcher's smile all about her it seemed still again she saw the same dream she crept close to him she came close to her father snuggled her head under snuggle means move into a warm comfortable position close to other person so she went close to her father she put her head under her arm held tightly to his shirt he, she held her father tightly then the dark did not matter she lay still so when she realized that her father is next to her she was no more scared the dark did not matter she lay still that means she slept here rub your feet against my legs and get them warm said father so father said that make your feet warm by rubbing them against my feet tired out he slept before the little girl a funny feeling came over her poor father not so big after all father was tired and he slept before kezia could sleep and a funny feeling came into kezia's mind that poor father he is not so big after all and with no one to look after him he was harder than grandmother but it was a nice hardness so when she also realized that there is nobody to look after father by appearance by feeling he was harder than grandmother but not but it was a nice hardness in him and every day he had to work and was too tired to be a mr mcdonnell then kezia realized that every day my father has to work hard there is nobody to look after him so he is too tired to be like mr mcdonnell she had torn up all his beautiful writing she stirred suddenly with sigh she also realized that all his beautiful speech she has torn and then she suddenly moved a little and she took a long breath what's the matter asked her father another dream so father realized something and he asked kezia what's the matter did you see another dream oh said the little girl my head's on your heart i can hear it going what a big heart you've got dear father dear so kezia said that Uh, no it's just my heart my hand is on your heart and i can hear the beating of your heart you have such a big heart dear father so father dear has a big heart the story is by katrin mensfield so finally kezia realized that her father has a big heart he actually loves her he can't show it he can't show her uh, he don't have time to play with her like mr mcdonnell because he is too busy in his work and there is nobody to look after him finally kezia realized her father's love for her what do you feel about your parents write about your feelings any incident that you remember with your parent it would be great to read it thank you for listening to the chapter students